Over the past 12 months, the importance of our emergency services has been so evident. Many lives have been saved, but are we doing enough to help the people that are helping us? On average, 1,999 calls are made each and every day. I want to know how the people on the front line are managing and what support is on hand to manage their mental health. My journey brings me to Croydon, South London, to meet Ricky Nuttall. Ricky is currently serving in the City of London's Fire Brigade and has gotten in touch to share his story. I had the pleasure of meeting Ricky last September and we both took part in a very unique experience, SAS Who Dares Wins on Channel 4. Ricky was one of many firefighters who bravely risked his life in the Grenfell Tower blaze, which claimed many innocent people and left the community broken beyond repair. Two years, the anniversary, and I was, I was very touched there, but some of the lines you talk about, your breaths were not enough, and you went into that building three times, three times. Do you think once you go in once, do you think you're lucky to emerge and you worry about the second time? Do you think your luck is running out? Or what, what is your view once, twice, three times? I think with any fire, there's always a potential um, that something might go wrong. You, you know, you're, you're dealing with a very unpredictable force. Um, on that night particularly, after the first time, um, it was quite harrowing. Because you're red watch, you were on a night shift, so yes, you were correct, actually asleep yeah. at this point. Hello, mate. How you doing, man? Okay. Yeah, good, mate. Good. Come in. Come in. What's in place for our emergency services when they're struggling? Because this is daily, right? Yeah. Well, this, this is this is a daily occurrence. This brings us round nicely to the charity that um, I want to support, um, and that I'm actually an ambassador for. Okay. It's called the UK Emergency Services Giving, and. The idea of this charity, it's a new startup charity, but it's going to be absolutely massive. And the idea is it's going to be a one-stop shop for mental health services for every single yeah. emergency service responder in the UK. Okay. It's somewhere where you can phone them up and you can say, I've been at this incident, I've seen this, this has happened. Yeah. And, and you will have immediate access to support mechanisms that, um, that will undoubtedly save lives. Because I've been to a place where I've sat on my living room floor and I've contemplated suicide because I felt that bad, felt that sad and unhappy inside. I didn't think I could go on. And in those moments, there wasn't really anyone that I could reach out to. Here are some figures from the Chartered Institute of Personal Development for Mental Health and Emergency Personnel. This survey was taken in 2018. It's scary to think that almost 70% of our ambulance services reported mental health issues due to work commitments. With constant pay cuts, additional working hours just to make ends meet, are we really, as a country, looking after the people who are trained to protect us? On average, almost 45% of the UK's average emergency services reported they were struggling with some form of mental health and seek the help they needed. Okay. The, the London Fire Brigade have got a counselling and wellbeing service, as have a lot of brigades, but it's a very tiny team and they were overrun following Grenfell. Right. And the first thing you get told when you walk through the door, which is no fault of the councillors, it's just the process that the fire brigade have. The first thing you're told when you walk through the door is you have 15 sessions maximum. So you know if you're not fixed within 15, 15 sessions, sessions yeah. you're, you're done anyway. Yeah. And that, that puts you under incredible pressure from the outset. And if you're already suffering from anxiety or depression, that just adds to it, that doesn't help. Yeah. You, you need to know that you've got somewhere to go where you can speak to someone and, and no matter what happens, they will be there. Yeah. They are the support network. And so what we're getting together and putting together at the moment is that support network that will be there for everybody. We're talking from Highland Mountain Rescue to prison officers to um, ambulance staff, firefighters, doctors, nurses, um, police. Yeah. R and L I down at the coast. You have volunteer lifeboat workers like my dad. Mm. Anyone and everyone that works in an environment where they're doing a public service and they 
have the potential to come into contact with trauma yeah. that might affect them, they will have access to this. And it, this charity is going to be huge and it's doing incredible things. We've got, uh, as I said, myself as an ambassador, we've also got several other ambassadors like um, uh, Laura Tott, who lots of people will know from First Dates, yep. one of the waitresses from First Dates. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that she's also yeah. a paramedic. Yeah, she is. Yeah. So she comes into trauma. Um, we've got Darren Goff, Garrett Jones, Tessa Sanderson, um, Dean Stott, um, Henry Fraser. I suppose, you know, the reason I'm here is to kind of link up with you now. You know, from our first documentary, which is part of the Who Am I concepts, which was all about me and raising money for Cancer Research yeah, UK. Brilliant, and, yeah, brilliant. You know, we, we raised over £3,000 in 20 days, which was amazing, but... It's incredible, yeah. It's, it's bigger than me. You know, mental health is, is, is everywhere. It's inclusive. It's, 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 the, it's not nationwide, it's worldwide. So, you know, the next step was about somebody else's cause, somebody else's, you know, charity and how I can now help you. So, hopefully, we can raise awareness you know, for, for, for this great charity and all the emergency services in, yeah. in the UK. And... The event we will be partaking in for this great charity will be the three national peaks. Scarfell Pike in Cumbria, Snowdon in Wales and Ben Nevis in Scotland. The aim is to complete all three peaks within 24 hours, whilst carrying the weight of a £40 Bergen which was similar to the ones we wore on SAS Who There's Wins. This will subsequent the mental health and how much just one person can carry whilst carrying out their daily duties. We will aim to support that. We will aim to complete this. We will aim to support them. I suppose people will say, you know, it's your job. It shouldn't really affect your mental health. You kind of know what you're doing. You know what you're in for. That's what you're trained for. Yeah. But mental health doesn't work that way, does it? No, I mean, if you think about it, every single job, every single job that anybody does, has stresses in it. If you work in an office, yeah. I could say, well, you know, you, you're an estate agent. That's, you chose to do that job, what are you getting stressed for? Yeah. It doesn't work that way. Just because I'm a firefighter, it doesn't mean I won't face struggles. It doesn't mean I won't have stresses or I won't struggle to cope with things. I'm not immune to it. Firefighters, any emergency service workers, we're not superhuman people. We're just regular run of the mill people that sometimes do superhuman things. You know, we, we have to act and go above and beyond sometimes even what we think our capabilities are in order to save other human life. That's a, an honour and a privilege in my book and I'm, I'm very, very proud yeah. to have been a part of the things I have.